To supply the fashion houses of Milan or Tokyo with a new season's design for crocodile skin shoes or handbags, as many as three or four million crocodile and caiman are killed each year. Nobody can measure the scale of the trade accurately because most of it is illegal. Apart from a few farms in Africa and Asia where crocodiles are legally bred for their skins, most of the animals used in the fashion trade are taken from the wild. Probably 90% of the crocodile skins used in the world come from the three species of caiman found in South America, where there is no legal farming of the animals. pongamos en la noche, llega las horas de la, de la noche, por ahí a las 7 en adelante y en principio uno a, a foquear con el compañero y, y le va haciendo la cacería respecto que no se le que no se espante porque esos son animales que ya están jugados, ya están y entonces uno lo, lo va cazando con mañita para que no se vaya el compañero lo coge con la, la trampa y lo mata para darle de la de vivir a uno también. Esas son cosas que uno a veces no sale en la cacería y ya consigue. Que toma toma la, la de buena que le coge uno 20, 30, hasta 50 animales. ¿eh? Y hay noches que le toca a uno, no coge nada, 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 que le toca venirse vacío por la casa. Gasta la, la plata en la batería y no más nada. Lo pagan aquí 100 pesos, aquí en Colombia. Se vende para afuera, eso lo compran por allá para Barranquilla, no sé para qué lo podrán allá, tiene que ser zapatos y esas cosas. Así. The individual skins are salted and dried to begin their long journey down the river to the coast. Local dealers trade up and down the rivers collecting skins from the campesino farmers who have squatted along the riverbanks. The 100 pesos which the hunter gets for each skin, about 30 pence, means valuable hard currency to buy rice or other consumer goods. Otherwise, he and his family subsist on the few animals they keep and what vegetable crops they can grow in the poor soil.
Colombia, in common with most countries in South America, has banned the trade in all live animals and in animal products such as caiman skins. But for the farmers and fishermen who live in the remote wetlands of the Magdalena River Basin, the caiman has become an important source of cash income. The conservation legislation created in the capital has little relevance to the lives of country people in this remote region where there are no roads and little chance of being controlled by the police or by the environmental protection officials. accessible regions of South America, the traditional trade routes have followed the major rivers down to the seaports. In Colombia, apart from the Amazon basin in the south of the country, the major navigable river is the Magdalena, which eventually runs into the Caribbean. The Magdalena is fed by thousands of square miles of small rivers and swamp. This is the traditional habitat of the Cayman crocodile. Although there is a traffic in live animals and other animal products, such as cat skins, crocodile and other reptile skins are the major illegal wildlife export out of South America. The trade operates via a network of hunters and dealers throughout the whole continent. In the small towns of the Magdalena River Basin, there are a number of intermediate dealers who provide the link between local collectors and the mafia-controlled exporters at the coast. Esta exportación va así de Barranquilla en conexión hasta la pa ciudad de Colón, Panamá. De Colón va hacia, hacia la isla de Yeso, el Japón. En Panamá es que hacen los desembarques allá y entonces allá relaciones ya por otros países, el mundo europeo. Hasta Hamburgo, también donde hay despacho, los puertos marítimos. Pavón. Para Muni, por allá también, mercados internacionales. Va para los Países Bajos, para Holanda. Y Holanda coge a, a Puerto Marítimo de Génova, Italia. Aquí se fabrican carteras y zapatos, los productos que se sacan. De la piel grande de babilla se hacen zapatos y carrieles. El proceso. Bueno, la producción no se puede decir un número exacto, pero sí se consumen más de 200.000 corte de cuatro pies por aquí se compra un valor de cuatro, de 300 pesos 400 del pique, de, de, de las grandes y ya se vende a 500 100 cruda no piel cruda directamente no está curtida vale curtida Magdalena reaches the Caribbean at Barranquilla, Colombia's largest seaport, and the major point of export for all kinds of contraband, apart from reptile skins. The big dealers wield tremendous political and economic power and are closely connected with the drug mafia. The body responsible for the protection of the environment and the country's natural resources is Indurena. But with the low priority given to ecology politically, Indurena has limited powers. Its officials are poorly paid and have no powers of arrest or forcible entry. They are not armed and must count on the cooperation of the police or customs to intercept any major illegal shipments of animals or skins. Most of their operations are in response to tip-offs or false information and they often arrive too late, only to find that the dealers have already moved on. This is 
ese pecho de varilla. Aquí tenemos parte de una cola de varilla. The large tanneries have traditionally worked with reptile skins as well as cowhide and sheepskin. But Indorena has had some effect, and it is more usual these days for reptile skins to be shipped uncured, to be finished in the tanneries of Europe or the East. However, in a country like Colombia, where corruption is widespread and institutionalized, the effectiveness of Indorena in controlling the skin trade is limited. Although they sometimes receive information about shipments of skins waiting in the port to leave the country, they are powerless to act and in general can only direct their actions against the small operators or the little men who supply the big dealers. To avoid local corruption within their own organization, Indorena's investigation division control their operations from the capital, Bogota. This division is led by Ricardo Martinez. In this moment, we are adelantando an actuation of control in materia fauna silvestre. We are in the house of a commercial of Bavilla, Rellena, who is more than anything a market for the tourist. Eh, como ustedes pueden observar, ya hay, piel, hay babilla rellena, hay pieles frescas. Hay grandes problemas para la entidad para tratar de llegar a los grandes. Eh, se están haciendo una serie de, podemos decir, investigaciones, a pesar de que nosotros no somos un cuerpo investigativo. Es difícil, hemos logrado en varias oportunidades, pero es un proceso que requiere la acción de varias entidades, no solamente del instituto, sino más que todo de respaldo de acciones netamente ya policías investigativas. Y precisamente en estos momentos estamos tratando de adelantar ese tipo de investigación a ver si logramos lograr o llegar a esos grandes, que es nuestro propósito, porque desafortunadamente no se logrará erradicar esta situación hasta que no logremos, podemos decir, evitar el comercio. Mientras exista comercio, desafortunadamente, el problema de captura y aprovechamiento de nuestros recursos seguirá. Y estamos tratando con los grandes a ver si es factible. Shortly before Indorena raided the premises of Delarosa, he had killed 600 boas and baby caiman, which would also have been turned into letter knives or zipped purses. Some of these tourist items might be offered for sale in the market, but most would be smuggled out to the tourist resorts of the Caribbean. Some animals were lucky and were still alive when Indorena arrived, so these lizards and boa constrictors were confiscated in order to be released later. But despite the gruesome nature of their haul, the Indorena officials were still intent on education rather than punishment. Yes, hay que liberarlos de una vez. Sí, sí, Sal, salimos a liberar. Ya las contaron torrecillas. No, no, no. Hay que contar. Ya mejor cuenta y hacemos el acta. Trajeron acta. Pero tú no sabes el mal que estás haciendo. Así como, por ejemplo, en estos momentos tú estás sobreviviendo de este recurso. Debemos de pensar que los hijos suyos, sus nietos, los tataranietos también tienen... Ya, por qué yo hice esto? Es que la señora se le torció toda la boca y no tenía ni para ir al médico y pensaba, a ver, ahí tengo una receta... Más bien ahora hacemos aquí una recolecta y le damos para que lleve a la señora del médico. Pero no haga esto. ¿Ah? Esto estamos acabando, digamos, con los recursos, estamos acabando con una riqueza que es de todos nosotros, que hagamos las cosas legalmente. Y te doy una inquietud, que dentro del Código Penal ya quedó establecido esto como un delito. 
te digo, he de decir a mi juicio estimo, pues usted es una persona correcta, que está tratando de trabajar, de sacar a su familia adelante, que seguro nunca habrá tenido ningún problema a nivel policial. No, ah, exacto. Dios le está corriendo un riesgo, por eso le hago eso. Porque, es decir, esos está constituyéndose ya como delito penal, y establece cárcel de seis meses a tres años. Although they left these premises with a substantial haul of confiscated goods, the Indurainer officials are aware that this was only small fry and that the bigger dealers and exporters are immune from their policing efforts, protected by the mafia and by political graft. Nonetheless, Indurainer takes its educational role very seriously and exhibited their confiscated goods in the window of their offices and published their action in the press and on television. As a result of this publicity, the big dealers were forced to be more cautious about their activities. In addition to their policing role, Indurena also administers Colombia's national parks, and it is here that they release the confiscated animals which have survived. Mira lo que nosotros decomisamos allá en Soledad. Soledad, ¿qué eso qué? Sí, estos son unas boas y unos lobos marinos. Pero vamos a liberarlos a por acá. Por acá, sí, sí claro. Son así donde haya batulce. Claro, sí. sí. Este puede ser el lugar aquí, aquí al cuadro. Aquí sí. No, aquí para que ellos vayan. Para que busquen, busquen el monte enseguida. Aquí, aquí. Sí. Vamos a liberar primero las boas. ¿Cuántos hay? Eh, hay como unas una 12 boas. ¿Son grandes? Sí, hay una grande. Espérate, espérate. Vamos a dejar así. Yo la voy sacando de Una. Hay una. Vamos a contarla para tres latas de comida. Sí. Una. Levántala. Seis. Seis. Siete. Siete. ¿Cuántas hay? Siete. Sí.
With the expanding exploitation of the region for farming and ranching, and the increasing demand from abroad for skins, the caiman are being hunted more intensively every year. Such is the slaughter that it is rare these days to find an animal more than four feet long. But skins of all sizes have some use in the trade. Ironically, the Colombian national parks, which are designated as wildlife protection areas, can also become hunting grounds for poachers. Indirena is underfinanced and understaffed, but it is the wider political implications of wildlife conservation which concern the park managers like Fernando Duque. Eh, a pesar de que es un instituto que tiene 25 años de creado, ha tenido graves problemas en el manejo de los recursos por varias razones. Una de las razones es su escaso presupuesto. Actualmente es un instituto que maneja aproximadamente unos 1.200 millones de pesos colombianos al año y tiene que administrar un área cercana a las 500.000 hectáreas solamente en el área de parques. Fuera de eso tiene muy poco personal, por lo menos en el caso del parque que yo manejo, somos cinco funcionarios para manejar un solo parque que tiene 25.000 hectáreas. Por lo tanto es bastante difícil eh, generar una administración adecuada de estos parques porque no hay funcionarios debido a que no hay presupuesto. Otro problema grave que se da en Colombia con el manejo de los recursos es de que los funcionarios en Colombia son excesivamente mal pagos. Generalmente las pieles y el comercio de especies ilícitas en Colombia eh, le genera al, a las personas mucho más de lo que ganan y de lo que el instituto es capaz de pagarles a las personas. Luego un funcionario es fácilmente comprable. Si adquiere una piel, una piel de babilla o de caimán o de felinos en general, jaguares o pumas, una piel de estas vale mucho más de lo que el, el funcionario gana en un mes. Entonces, por esta razón, el funcionario fácilmente vende y deja pasar este, este deja que la, el comercio líquido se, se haga, ¿no? aún a sabiendas de, de lo que está haciendo. Debido a que se paga tan mal, el, el funcionario se ve en la obligación de prestar, digamos, de colaborar con el comercio ilícito de, de especies. Hay una cuestión interesante que hay que ver y es la doble moral de las naciones extranjeras, el caso de Europa y de Estados Unidos. Los grandes países del norte buscan, tienen unos grandes movimientos de opinión pública acerca de la protección de la vida silvestre. Al mismo tiempo hay una gran demanda de artículos que deben de ser prohibidos, su, siquiera su comercialización, porque están generando en nosotros una, una gran extracción. ¿Por qué? Porque estos artículos tienen unos precios muy elevados. Entonces eso favorece que precios tan altos ¿no? favorecen la, la, la caza furtiva y la extracción furtiva de esas especies aquí en Colombia. Y esta es una de las razones también de lo que podríamos llamar una doble moral. Mientras existe una, una gran, un movimiento de opinión pública muy grande en protección de la vida silvestre, por el otro se está patrocinando esta destrucción ilícita.
Hundreds of thousands of skins are smuggled out of Colombia every year. Indirena can only intercept a tiny proportion of this trade, and then they are faced with the problem of what to do with the confiscated skins. The regional director in Santa Marta, Fabian Mariaga, has found an unusual solution. In this moment, we have deplazado acá a la cárcel judicial a effect of hacer entrega de un decomiso de pieles de babilla que fue entregado por la policía vial del departamento en virtud de un accidente de tránsito eh, existente en días pasados. Una vez se hizo entrega a nuestra institución de dichas pieles, se procedió al trámite interno y repito, en el día de hoy estamos haciendo la entrega a la, a la, a la cárcel municipal a efecto de que aquí le den la utilidad eh, que ellos se merecen. Estando en un establecimiento de estos de beneficencia, creemos conveniente de que la colaboración de la Inderena es sumamente importante porque ellos nos va a permitir de que nosotros colaboremos en proceso de resocialización o rehabilitación del interno en esta institución. The problem of what to do with confiscated live animals or animal products is one that faces the wildlife protection agencies of every country in the world. Live animals can sometimes be returned to the wild or donated to zoos. But if the wildlife products such as crocodile skins were auctioned off, then the authorities would themselves be participating in the illegal trade. In fact, this often happens in some countries, including Colombia. This particular shipment of skins, which was intercepted purely by chance, is quite likely to re-enter the trade via the prison officials. There existed no facilities at the prison, either for tanning or working the hides. This was more of an exercise in public relations than a genuine attempt at social rehabilitation. Santa Marta is strategically placed near one of the marijuana and cocaine producing areas of northern Colombia, an area largely controlled by rebel guerrilla armies. It is also a point from which live animals and wildlife products are smuggled out, so many of the prison inmates are there for smuggling offences. It's, it's tough here because they don't supply soap, toothpaste, uh, your personal needs, they don't supply. For a guy to get along here, he's got to have family here. And, uh, being a stranger here, I mean, you know, I'm the only gringo. It was pretty tough on us, because well, I got stabbed once in Rio Hachi for, for kicking a guy's bucket. So he stabbed me in the middle of the night while I was sleeping in the back. They had to take me to the hospital, but fortunately it wasn't too, wasn't too bad. I survived it. I was in the Vietnam War as a flight engineer, and uh, I got out of the war. I took flying lessons that the government paid for, so I became a pilot. And uh, that's the reason why I'm here now. I'm on a five-year sentence for violation of Colombian airspace. I was down here, well, what I was doing was smuggling animals, birds and cats and things of that nature. And a few animal skins once in a while, too. Picked up a plane in Miami, Beechcraft D-18. We came down to Maracaibo, Venezuela, with a load of cargo. My flight, flight planned out of Maracaibo to Curaçao. And I waited in Curaçao for a couple weeks for my people to the people I was working for to get the strip ready. And uh, the strip was in the Maikau area, in Wajira. And uh, they, were having, they were having problems keeping the birds alive and fed and I don't know, so I got stuck in Curacao for a while. And then they called me about 12 o'clock one day and told me to, to be at the strip at five, 5 that afternoon. So I left Curacao about 1 o'clock. No, no, it was about 3 o'clock. I left Curacao. But then as I was uh, approaching Colombia, I lost my electrical system, and uh, I couldn't talk to the people on the strip. And I didn't want to land not knowing who was there, if the police was going to be there, or the army, or whatever. So uh, by that time, I was out of fuel, just about out of fuel, so I had to make an emergency land in uh, Rio Hachi International Airport. I made a belly land and without my nose gear, so. Then I got arrested, and here I am. It'd be a straight shot to the States, uh, between Cuba and Haiti, uh, across the islands, Exumas, Exuma Islands, straight north into Miami, and flying about, uh, well, 100 feet, 
straight into Miami, over right over to Castaways, Miami Beach, or or a lot of times I take a, a west western degree heading, west degree heading off uh, Freeport, straight in, but flying low about 100 feet off the off the ocean, 50 or 100 feet. And then once I got in, I'd go ahead and raise altitude. I'd, I'd go in close to a small general airport, and then I would start raising altitude like I'd came out of that airport. Then I'd hit the Everglades and uh, unload my cargo. Even to this day, even with all the sophisticated radars and everything that they have, it's still, I believe, is people still doing it. The smaller people can still do it. But that part of my life is over when I leave here. <laughs> I learned a lesson here. I don't want to come back to the Santa Marta prison. Santa Marta is just one port of exit from South America. Although live animals or wildlife products might offer themselves as a safer option than cannabis or cocaine to the pilot of a light aircraft, the big trade in skins leaves the ports and airports of South America by the container load. These are shipped to neighboring countries such as Panama and then transshipped to Europe or the East with valid export documents which falsely declare Panama to be the country of origin. The workshops of the East, especially those of Singapore, receive millions of reptile skins a year to process and manufacture into finished articles. The trade in reptile skins is a multi-million dollar industry worldwide. Boa from the Americas, python and cobra from Thailand or Indonesia, crocodile and caiman skins from all over the world, pass through a great melting pot. Some of these skins are legally exported from their country of origin under quota systems. Others are smuggled out undercover or using bogus documents. They are tanned and dyed and combined with other skins to produce finished products which may then be exported to yet another country. This work is rarely carried out in large factories. Small tanneries may handle several hundred reptile skins a week and are more difficult for the authorities to control.
Small workshops and sweatshops in Europe or the East use a wide range of skins to fashion into belts or boots or handbags. Many of these skins, like the common cobra or the whip snake, are obtained quite legally. Others, like the Malaysian pangolin, are rare and endangered and protected by local laws and by international agreement. But the very fact of their rarity makes the skins more desirable to the cowboy boot connoisseur. Fine shoes and cowboy boots from small illegal workshops are sent by mail order to regular customers all around the world. One collector may possess dozens of pairs of boots and will pride himself most on those made from the skins of the rarest and most endangered animals. Trade in live animals and animal products is regulated by CITES, the Convention on the International Trade in Endangered Species. Raw skins and finished goods can only be traded using official CITES documentation. Unfortunately, there are so many loopholes in the system that illegally obtained skins can easily enter the trade at any stage. By the time the shoes or handbags reach their final destination in London or New York, they may have passed through 10 different countries so that it would need a trained zoologist to identify the species correctly. No one could be sure of the true country of origin. The consumer may be offered an article with official CITES papers, but this is no guarantee that the skins were legally obtained in the first place. The vast legal trade actually encourages and disguises the existence of the illegal trade. We are also with reptilian die speziell auf dem deutschen Markt erworben worden sind. Diese Reptilien sind natürlich zum Teil genauso geschützt, wie es bestimmte Pelze auch gibt, die äh, man nicht verarbeiten darf. Wir halten uns also strikt an diese Weisungen äh, der internationalen äh, Reptilverbandes und äh, können jederzeit mit der Ware, die wir hier auf deutschem Markt legal gekauft haben, auch legal Export machen. Es ist also so, dass wir auf deutschem Markt die CITES-Bescheinigung liefern können. Wir kaufen in deutschen Gerbereien, die hier bei uns im Raum Offenbach vorhanden sind, die Schlangenleder ein. Die werden also äh, als Rohware nach Deutschland äh, gebracht. Python kommt aus Thailand und Indonesien. Krokodil kommt vorwiegend aus Südamerika, aus Farmen. Genau kann ich Ihnen das nicht sagen, aus dem ganz einfachen Grund, das ist Geheimnis der Gerberei. Die haben aber alle für diese Ausfuhr äh, oder Einfuhr äh, der Reptilien alle die Genehmigungen des ausführenden Landes. Although nearly 100 countries are now signatories of the Washington CITES agreement, certain countries have a long tradition of using wildlife products. Their authorities are slow to enforce either their own legislation or international agreements. Japan and the common market countries, particularly Germany, France, Spain and Italy, use millions of skins annually, and many of these skins have been taken and traded illegally. But even a designer label doesn't guarantee import into the United States, which has an active and knowledgeable enforcement agency in the Fish and Wildlife Service. These belts here are made from a species of caiman, which is found in South America, known as a yacaray. In the United States, they're illegal because they are on the endangered species list. Presently, there's 29 species of caimans, crocodiles, and alligators. At this point, the United States only allows five of those species in legally with proper permits from the exporting or re-exporting country. There are times where we'll get shipments that have legal documents, but upon inspection and furthermore, upon IDing the actual skins, or in this case, the, the byproducts, which uh, are belts, uh, it will indicate that it is other than what the importer is declaring. 
A certain country bans the exports. Well, they cross over the border until the adjacent country who will issue bogus documents. You might see a particular shipment originates in Asia, goes through a European common market country to be made into a byproduct, and then comes to the States. Well, this is going on and on and on. And a month down the line, you get an entry, and it goes from Asia through the European common market country, say Germany. For some reason, it goes through South America. This bogus document is claiming that now the country of origin is this country who's issuing the permit, and it's legal. So when a shipment comes here, now I'm looking at a legitimate CITES document issued, as far as I know, from the country of origin. How are we to know that it was actually smuggled out of one country taken from the wild and then bogus documents gotten in the other country. I mean, I'm looking at a legal document to a certain degree. We have to put integrity in the issuing country and their documents that uh, are presented to us. And, you know, it's unfortunate, but in a lot of countries, money talks. It's supposed to be a combination of two different types of reptile. I believe it's supposed to be the whip and uh, the monitor lift. Yeah, another one up here, I'll look. That's what it is. Hold on a second. I can't even get the shoe in. <laughs> we got one more stop. Presently, I have a staff of, of 14 inspectors. Uh, we clear approximately anywhere from 40 to 60,000 shipments a year. Uh, it's next to impossible with that few people to do uh, the type of work that we should be doing, and a lot of stuff does get biased. A lot of shipments are cleared on paperwork because we just don't have the time to physically inspect all of the shipments. So unfortunately, there is a large majority of things uh, that are getting by, whether it be smuggled uh, or just misdeclared. I mean, even with 100 boxes, you know, I go down to the airlines and I say, okay, I'm going to do 25%. I'm going to look at 25 boxes. Well, God knows what's in the other 75 boxes. Short of doing 100% inspection physically on a shipment, stuff's getting by. I mean, we're finding that more and more, but we just don't have the time to look at every shipment that comes in. You declare one thing, we go down, and it's something else. But if we never see it, we only know what you're declaring on a paperwork. I don't even know how, how rampant or, or how big it is. It may be a couple of shipments. It may be happening, you know, every, every 10 shipments. I, I, I really don't know. Entirely different kind. Mostly dead. These are the brown lizards. Is that Lenny's? Seems to check out, but it's really hard to make out without a magnifying glass. Like, you can see that it is Varanus. Might have opened that up, Carmen. I don't know. This one that went further back, just to see if it checks out. What style is that? That's special. I think you just opened that one. Okay. It's one of the bigger boxes. <laughs> Make sure there's no other wildlife in there. See if I can find something. When I first came on, we were looking at about one out of every four shipments, 25%. Now we're probably hovering around about 5%. You're a broker and you're presenting paperwork every week, the same importer he brings in every couple weeks, let's say, and you start to see a pattern that we're always clearing it on paperwork. We're not looking at it. Again, it's up to the discretion of the inspector. The paperwork's in order. Everything's here. I'll clear it. So you start to think, well, rather than bring these items in, I'll bring something else declare it as the other items and take my chance that Fish and Wildlife won't look at it. So if you're going to bring in something protected or endangered or something that needs a permit and we don't look at it, we just review the paperwork, you got it.
to back again The tropical forest is slashed and burned by the acre And raised by the power soil Till nothing that's living is safe or remote A lizard is slit from its tail to its throat So the north demands from the south Where you live direct from your hand to your mouth Mystery, they're being stolen. 